we have the clear understanding of the process of sampling and in this lecture we will find out the frequency components present in the Fourier transform of the sampled signal which is SF. The sampled signal is ST and its Fourier transform is equal to SF when frequency is in hertz. Let's say the message signal MT is equal to cos omega naught t. We are having only one frequency equal to omega naught in the message signal. Therefore, omega naught will be the maximum frequency component present in the message signal and we represent it by omega m. Therefore, we can write the message signal mt equal to cos omega m t. And in the Fourier transform chapter, we calculated the Fourier transform of cos omega naught t and we found we found the Fourier transform of cos omega naught t is equal to pi multiplied to delta omega minus omega naught plus delta omega plus omega naught. So this clearly indicates we will have two impulses and the first impulse is present at omega equal to plus omega naught and the second impulse will be present at omega equal to minus omega naught. Now we have replaced omega naught by omega m. So we will write the Fourier transform m omega equal to pi multiplied to delta omega minus omega m. In place of omega naught we will write omega m plus delta omega plus omega m. So here in this case first impulse will be present at omega equal to plus omega m and the second impulse will be present at omega equal to minus omega m and the waveform will look like this. There are two impulses present in the Fourier transform. Now we know that omega m is equal to 2 pi multiplied to fm. So we can write 2 pi fm in place of omega m. So our message signal mt we can write as cos 2 pi fm multiplied to t. So in this case we are having the message signal in which the frequency is in hertz and when you calculate the Fourier transform you will get the Fourier transform mf which is the Fourier transform in which the frequency is in hertz. Here in this case frequency is in radians per second. You can calculate the frequency components in radians per second but in questions they usually provide the frequencies in hertz that's why we are proceeding with our analysis keeping frequency in hertz and mf will have the same waveform but the first impulse will be present at plus fm and the second impulse will be present at minus fm and this is how the final waveform of mf will look here frequency is in hertz and we have performed the complete analysis of sampling process and we saw there that MT is provided to a device known as sampler. It is provided to a device known as sampler and along with MT we also provide a periodic impulse strain CT and the output of this device is ST which is known as the sampled signal, this signal here. And ST will have, will have the Fourier transform SF when frequency is in hertz and its waveform will look like this. We have obtained this waveform from the derivation we did in the first lecture, the derivation for the Fourier transform of the sampled signal. And from that derivation we have this waveform. You can see that this particular waveform is here and this is the waveform of MF. This will be FM 
and this will be minus fm and the same waveform will be repeated from minus infinity to infinity and this waveform here is same as this one but it is shifted from the origin and the amount of shifting is equal to fs therefore this frequency here is equal to fs which is the sampling frequency and it is the frequency of the periodic impulse strain we are feeding to the sampler it is having ts as the fundamental time period known as sampling interval omega s is the fundamental angular frequency and then we have fs which is the frequency in hertz and it is equal to 1 over ts and it is equal to omega s divided by 2 pi so this frequency here is equal to fs and therefore therefore this frequency here is equal to fs plus fm fs plus fm and this frequency here is equal to fs plus minus fm therefore we will write fs minus fm similarly this frequency here is equal to minus fs there is left shifting of this waveform present at the origin by fs therefore we will have minus fs and this makes this frequency here is equal to minus fs plus fm and this frequency here is equal to minus fs minus fm similarly the other spectrums will be present in sf and it is clear that we are having we are having fm as one frequency component we are having fm as one frequency component we have minus fm as another frequency component similarly we have fs plus fm as the frequency component fs minus fm fs minus fm we have minus fs plus fm minus fs plus fm then we have minus fs minus fm minus fs minus fm similarly we will have minus 2 fs plus fm and minus 2 fs minus fm and so on so we can generalize this and we can write the frequency components present in the Fourier transform of the sampled signal equal to n fs plus minus fm so this is the ultimate result remember this result we will use it in the coming lectures the frequency components present in the Fourier transform of the sampled signal is equal to nfs plus minus fm where n is an integer now put different values of n and you will have different frequency components present so this is all for this lecture see you in the next one